Hello, YouTuber friends. Hello, music vinyl community. Hello, friends. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Just got back two, two days ago from um, performing at South by Southwest. It was it was really great. I wish I could have been there longer. I wish I could have been there the whole week, but I had to work. But it was a great time. And um, I was hoping to possibly run into S Texan and L for the Bright Eyes concert, but I was so focused on my business that I couldn't even go to Bright Eyes because I was playing later that evening and da da da. But since I've been back, I've watched a few videos and I see that uh, Big Star 1000 has been doing a series on uh, psychedelia. It inspired me, and so I thought I'd add my own start because it'll be a start. I can't even begin to show you my, all of my psychedelia and music from the 60s and 70s in one video or even two. But I'm going to show some. And I was really inspired by Big Star. I, you know, um, I'm going to shout out to him that the man knows his stuff, you know. Uh, uh, he apparently researches things and um, finds out about the good stuff. So I'm going to add, show some of the stuff that I have and maybe turn you on to some things maybe you haven't read about. Cream Wheels of Fire, of course you know, I'm showing this because Big Star 1000 you showed Disraeli Gears and here's another one of Cream's fantastic psychedelic art and uh, blues rock albums. This one is so good. And another cover, double album. That's pure psychedelia. A great album. A less known band from the, the 60s is this band called Hooked. And uh, I'll show for Big for um, Step in 73 that it's on the Uni label, one of his favorite and my favorite labels. Well, I like Uni, MCA Universal, the Uni um, brand. They were getting it right at the time. They were trying to cash in on the youth market, but they were getting it right most of the time. And this is one of those bands where I venture to say that once again, I bet this band started out as a soul band, a soul review, review band. And when the times changed, they changed their image and started to psych their sound up. If anything, these guys kind of sound more, more like progressive rock with a with a, a soul edge. But this is a great record in the really as many times I'll be wondering, why don't we hear about this, these guys? We talk about that band, but why not this band? Rhinoceros. This is another band from the uh, era that mixed soul, jazz, psychedelia, and hard rock. They actually had a minor hit with a song called Apricot Brandy that I dare say I think I've heard used in some kind of advertising in the last last several years. but. This is a great album, and check out the guys looking all totally. And that's Billy Mundy with the cap on. He was in the original Mothers of Invention. They had three albums. I have two of them. That There's the Rhinoceros, and then this one, Satin Chickens. This is great, too, as well. <laughs> what a funny name for an album, Satin Chickens. Could be the name of a band. Um, when it comes to Psych and Pop, this is an undiscovered um, bomb of a bomber of an album I, I, I use the word classic too much so I'm trying to think of other words crying chains they had a hit with sugar and spice in the 60s then they put this album out um, I think there was some involvement by the Kurt Betcher people or Gary Usher Isaac Guillory was a singer in this band um, can't recall what else he did but Isaac Guillory that name he's done other things this is an excellent album excellent Another lesser known quantity from those times was the band The Damnation. They had a better known album than this called The Damnation of Adam Blessing. I don't have that. But this one is pretty good. And the, the picture on the inside really shows the band and the, the look and the sound of the times. The big amps, people just wailing. This is a cool album. Even better than the last album, which is, I, if you ever see this, grab this, Time. Trust in men everywhere. Larry Byron of Steppenwolf was in this band before he joined Steppenwolf. There's a couple of classic songs on here. Beautiful Flower comes to mind right away. Uh, Leaving My Home. This is the real deal. This is more psychedelia that maybe you're not so familiar with that I highly recommend. And I'll tell you, I have a lot of psychedelia not on vinyl, but I have it digitally and on CD, and I just. I would I'd love to have many of those records to show you the vinyl of, but believe me, I've got them here in this in my collection. 
I have to include the Millennium Begin. This is definitely psychedelic, but it's also pop at its finest. Kurt Botcher, who was a writer, arranger for the association and many people behind many fantastic productions of the 60s as the mastermind of this band. Michael Finley of Krabby Appleton was also a member of this band. This album is a classic. This is an original copy too. Not a, this is not a reissue. Reissues are fine, but I love originals and I, I, it probably has to do with my age. I love it when I can find originals or have kept them. Okay, the Headshot. Interesting band I know very little about except they look, they look Hispanic to me. But this is without a doubt a psychedelic bomb. Uh, just uh, the last track on the album, Prophecy, no, Infinity, Infinity. It's been sampled, I don't know who by, but I've heard the end of this record, which is psychedelic as hell. Just a big sound, crazy sound collage, kind of spooky. Head Shop. It's been reissued. The Chambers Brothers have been respectfully mentioned, but here's another one of their albums that I say, find it. Love, Peace, and Happiness. It's just a double album. Brothers were definitely on top of their game by the time of this record, you know what I'm saying? We all know about Time Has Come Today, but this record is all spacey and love and peace, and but, but not cliche. I mean, you think of it as a cliche now, but you know, it was like they're really trying to uh, promote the idea of peace and togetherness, you know? Look at this, a band of brothers got the white boy on drums and, and he's good. Let me tell you, this band was very important to me as a young black kid to, to see that they existed, to let me know that, you know, being a rock musician was possible because much as I love the Beatles and all that stuff from England and stuff, I knew I couldn't be that. I'm not, I'm not white, you know, and black musicians are not regarded in the same way you know, uh, let's not, I don't want to start an argument, but you know, I know, I know from experience, you know, that I cannot be regarded in the same manner as those, those white musicians. And it was something I wanted, couldn't have it like that. The Chambers Brothers showed me what was possible. So what I'm trying to say is positive, okay? I just, please don't misunderstand me. I don't want to start an argument with someone who may misinterpret what I just said, <laughs> okay? Feel me, it's all about love and mainly love about music. Okay, this album here. The Tea Company, come and have some tea with the Tea Company. Probably, I don't know this, but they may have been put together by a producer, but they got it right. This album is really cool and psychedelic with sound effects in a sparse way. And the songs are slightly derivative. They do You Keep Me Hanging On. I mean, like everyone did You Keep Me Hanging On. Um, Vanilla Fudge killed it, so I don't know what the point was with anybody else trying to cover it, but other than that, this album is really cool. Recommend it. This is not an original, but this is a San Francisco band similar to um, the Charlatans with Dan Hicks or Quicksilver Messenger Service, Trips Accord. And this is a loving reissue on the Karma label, double album. And this cover is just one of the finest covers I've ever seen. I just love it. Textured with the uh, gold emboss as you catch it there in the light. Um, and the music is very worthwhile. A bit of that country rock kind of thing going on that I suppose you would expect from laid back California. Again, getting back to the Kurt Botcher uh, crew, this is Sagittarius with Present Tense. Uh, you might have heard this, their song up here, My World Fell Down. It wasn't a hit, but it got airplay. The other mastermind on this album is a man named Gary Usher, who did a lot of uh, production and writing work with Kurt Betcher. And I believe that his name, I'd like to encourage folks to remember, if you, th if you think of Kurt Betcher, start to think of Gary Usher, just as important, just as important here. This is an original copy of their uh, second record of Blue Marble on the Beach Boys label, Together Records. And they actually, uh, they wrote In My Room, along with Brian Wilson, and do their own version of it on here. And they do it justice. This album is fantastic. This is an excellent, excellent psych pop gem. A little more on the eclectic side, but definitely in there when it comes to psych is the band Kaleidoscope. The band that David Lindley, who ended up with Jackson Brown, 
This is where he started, or at least where I first became um, recognized or, or aware of him. Bernice, I think this is their second album. And um, this has more of a bluesy country feel, except they end up getting into this jam on the second side that goes everywhere. And um, that was one of, one of the things I associate with psychedelia and those times was exploration, wide open minds, anything goes, mixing all things together, which is also why I have to include some Frank Zappa or Mothers of Invention, and especially here, Lumpy Gravy, where he produces his first work of concrete music, concrete electronic music. Lord knows that at the time this came out, people were completely scratching their heads, but also getting heavily stoned to try to figure this, this thing out. I mean, at the time, it was so far out that truly, since he was so far ahead of most hippies and people, you had to get stoned to even halfway approach it. But you don't have to get stoned. This is really a true work of art. Frank Zappa was a genius. I mean, some people say that he wasn't and that's a bunch of garbage, but Derek Higgins says Frank Zappa was a genius, y'all. The Young Rascals, I definitely include them because they crossed over. Um, they had the big hits, being a white soul band, but they took on Psychedelia and did a pretty good job with it. And um, several albums. Um, Freedom Suite comes to mind, but I wanted to show this one, C. Um, great cover as well as some um, cool um, flirtations with becoming more psychedelic. Have to mention the 13th floor elevators. Easter Everywhere is one of my favorites. Picture disc going on here. These boys were way ahead of the times. The first time I played South by Southwest two years ago, I um, got to see Rocky Erickson live, and boy, what a treat that was. Captain Beefheart. I mean, the man was um, a science unto himself. Definitely to be included when you talk about psychedelia and groundbreaking music. This is a reissue um, by Rhino Records on the straight label. And also, as I've said many times before, I love colored vinyl. Nice colored vinyl version of Trout Mask Replica. Definitely an album to get wrap your head around. And if you want to know about the real history of rock and roll music, you, you really need to listen to that record and try to just try to catch it. Now, I include Blue Cheer when I talk about psychedelic rock, as well as just talking about the beginnings of metal and hard rock. Outside Inside, this album here definitely fits the bill. This is a psychedelic and hard at the same time. The cover, which is, um, you know, kind of a takeoff on Dolly, really catches it as well as the inside. These pictures, how psychedelic can you get? Um, this is a second copy of the album because when I was a teenager, I bought it as a teenager, and this cover, I thought, this, this picture was so cool that I wanted to put it on my wall. And so I just ripped it off. <laughs> I was just a kid, I, you know, didn't really understand record collecting, and so I just ripped it and put it up on the wall. Glad to find another copy. I'm gonna show, when we get close to 15 minutes, I'm thinking I'm using taking too much time, so I'm gonna just show these real quick. Blues Magoo's Electric Comic Book. This is their other album. Tingling Mother's Circus, a circus of the mind. You might not know about this. This is kind of um, psych pop light, and yet there's a song on here called Happy Bubble, which is one of my favorite songs. You know, sometimes these um, exploito um, projects get it right. Auto salvage. I need to come back to this and listen to it. I, I remember um, finding this used not that long ago, maybe five, six years ago, and I'm loving it. This one I've had forever. The Fort Mudge Memorial Dump. Bought it as a cutout when I was maybe eight, 17 or 18. Still am not hearing about this band. See, you can tell it's one of my old records where I wrote my, label, my name. This album's great. This is great. Fort Mudge Memorial Dump. I'll point out one song, What Good Is Spring? It starts side one, side two. You drop the needle on what good is spring and you're, 
you'll be thinking you're hearing like something a lost Fleetwood Mac tune or something it's so good the rotary connection Minnie Ripperton loving you this is where she started psychedelic and soulful one of those again cutting edge bands uh, mixed race trying to do something different definitely psychedelic rotary connection um, Big Star 1000 showed some Julie Driscoll and Brian Augur I had to trot this one out. I'm sure he probably has it. Street Noise. This cover is so cool. And the album, Double Album. This record is a journey. Julie Driscoll was the coolest. I'm thinking that she was so cool and so ahead of the times, that's why she's not an icon now like I, get, I just think people haven't caught up to her, you know, like Vashti Bunyan, how she was rediscovered by those folks. I, I think that Julie Driscoll is still due to be discovered because she was badass. We must include Vanilla Fudge Renaissance. Their version of um, Season of the Witch by Donovan, you, you must hear it. And another one of my favorites. Heavy by the Iron Butterfly. The Iron Butterfly theme on here. You want to talk about some pure psychedelic, psychedelic masterwork? Right here. Last few things I'll show is this is a record I bought. Heavy Guns. Still don't know much about it, but it's like kind of a early '70s um, take on dope smoking. Supposedly, kind of. A satire it doesn't really quite work but um, it's really kind of so bad that it's cool I think they were smoking too much weed when they made this a couple of brother a couple of guys um, trying to have the right image to sell the record is not exactly psychedelic but Harper and Rowe were some great songwriters I think they wrote some some hits um, I didn't didn't bone up so I can't tell you what it is this is another one that I don't think anybody knows about, Earth Island, We Must Survive. I think once you, if you find this one online, or if you find it, you'll be wondering why. This is another psychedelic lost gem. Last but not least, another gem that I love, The Eclectic Mouse. This is an original copy, it's been reissued. Um, this was orchestrated and very ambitious, more like David Axelrod, if anything. Really good stuff, and we're at the 18 minute mark, I gotta go. More coming.